Hello, I have a new axe. Yes, a uh, fairly lightweight carving axe this one and actually very reasonably priced. Anyway, I thought I would make a leather cover for it. Keep that edge nice and shiny and sharp. And so I'm going to not make just any axe cover. I always like to have a bit of fun with axe covers. But I still thought, what should I do? And actually I thought, been doing bits of shoe work, let's have some fun and do some broguing. So I'm going to do some broguing on it. I'm going to have a, a plain veg tan sort of cover and then a wave of broguing going around the top of the axe. So a bit of fun really and just means when I see it out there I know, oh yes that's my axe, it's got the broguing. <laughs> Who else could it be? <laughs> I know it's slightly nuts, but it's fun isn't it? What I've done first of all is I've done like a little sketch mock-up of what it might look like. So to do that I essentially draw around the axe and allow enough margin for seams. So the best way is to, some of it's a paper on my bench now, is to make a paper model of what you're going to be doing in the leather because the problem with an axe is it's obviously varying thickness as you go down. So if I can work this out without cutting my hand. Axe will sit in a, a, a sleeve like that. It will have a wrap around with a popper press stud. But what I am doing is I'm making quite a good welt so the axe doesn't cut the thread. It will all become clear in a minute. Great project. You want to do a bit of leather work, a bit of fun doing something like this, any kind of axe cover. It's nice and it protects your edge. So the first thing I need to do is cut the welt. When you, if you didn't have a welt and you sewed two sections of leather together, the axe blade would cut straight through it. And the idea of the welt, it's a bit like a bumper. It's an extra layer of leather that you sandwich in and it means the axe will hit the leather, not your row of stitching that's behind the leather. So using my pattern, I've just drawn around and scratched in my welt. So all I need to do now is cut it out. And <laughs> just as a bit of a joke, I can cut it out with the axe. So I will go around with my scratch rule and cut this out. It really is worth doing a paper pattern because you can check your fit and obviously you can then check that what you're doing is all, you know, as you want it. So it's a good idea at this stage just to check the positioning of the welt. So I'm just going to place that on there and check that my axe can still enter. Ooh, that's a bit close. It's fine once I'm in. So the welt there will have a row of stitches in it and it won't get cut by the blade. I probably need to just very slightly chamfer each of those bits out very slightly. So I'm just marking around my scratch all on the leather I'm going to use for the broguing. So that's the top edge. I'll use some gimping scissors to cut the lower edge there. So for the next bit I'm going to use these three millimeter um, triangular cut gimping scissors and actually I'll just show you on a scrap here the kind of effect. So there are, it gives you like a serrated edge. These are obviously made for cloth but they are quite um, good cutters so I find they do work. What you want to try and do is where you restart them uh, get the cutter blades into the same sort of bit of triangle otherwise you end up with like little half triangles. The other thing I find using them obviously they work because of the pressure needed better the more cut you do nearer, nearer the joint but also where you are doing like a curve try and keep everything moving 
So move the scissors, move the lever. Don't just sort of do a bit of cut and then don't keep it moving because you need a flow with these sorts of lines. It's not easy. <laughs> a little bit of a knack. If you keep everything moving, I do, if you do woodwork, it's very much like band sawing. You have to sort of, um, or driving a car, you have to try and sort of think ahead a bit and think, well, how's that bend in the road actually turning and try and sort of think a little bit ahead. So I've just laid this at the moment on here. I haven't done the holes, but that's the sort of effect. I'll be gluing and sewing that down. For the actual broguing, you can use a couple of punches. So it takes a bit longer than if you have a special tool, but you'll get a perfectly good result. You can even if you want to do very faint like guidelines. But the idea is it's a three millimeter and a I think it's one and a half. Yeah, one and a half millimeter ones here. I'd probably if I was doing this carefully, I would actually be doing little guidelines first, the scratch very faint lines. But you can quite happily go along, didn't do that last hole very well, you can very happily go along and just punch it. Oh, I like that. There we are, so that's just done with some punches. As I say, I think I would do faint guidelines really. You can get little tools um, like this one, which are actually preset with little uh, punches already so this one has one big punch and then two of the little ones and the obvious advantage is a bit quicker and a bit more accurate so the spacing's all being done for you again one would probably want to do a little faint guideline but you can tap it down and then just reverse it over the big punch for, can follow the same hole punch down and you can just keep on going along like that. I'm just going to use these dividers to give myself a little bit of a guideline. So I'm just pressing fairly lightly but it will just give me a faint little line which I can line one lot of punches up to. What I can then do, I've got a fairly hard block here to get a crisp hole, I can then Go along with my little tool, punching holes. I strictly would be doing this on the anvil, a bit more closer so I can see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm trying to get this on camera for you. So you can see what I'm doing. There you are. So I'll just go along this edge, taking my time. punching the little gimping pattern. That's the first row of holes done. I've just popped a bit of dye along the bottom edge as well, just blend it in a bit. So I'm just using a stamp now to get a little um, deer image on the sheaf. So I've just placed the components in position now and you've got my stamping here. And what I'm going to do next is stick these bits of the burgundy leather down and then machine them round. So again, I'm just using some uh, contact adhesive. This is the Renier Aquilim 315 and I'm trying not to clog up the holes uh, in the broguing with the glue. So what I'm sort of doing is placing it in position. I then smudge a bit of glue on the leather and then I will tap a bit around the broking holes. So give it something to work on around the edges in particular here. Then just a bit more. If I just sort of roll it over the glue hole area, we'll get some glue there without getting it too full on the holes themselves and then I will be able to stitch it down.
So I'm just going in putting a couple of tracks of stitching each side of the line there and I'm doing this on my post bed sewing machine which is ideally suited because it's got a wheel feed top and bottom so it gets a very even transit for the lever through this. So that's a couple of lines of stitching in. This will obviously all get stitched around the edge in time uh, when I come to actually assemble the two halves and obviously sewing through the welt as well. So next of all I'm going to glue my welt into position and I'm really getting ready now for the sewing part. So again, get it nicely coated. I've just smudged some glue on the inside over my stitches just in case the axe would have hit one of them. They're hammered down so they're quite well sunk down but it's just an added layer of protection. And then the other thing I've done just with my skiving knife is I've taken the welt down gradually to like a zero angle on the ends here, just beveled them off essentially at each each corner. So we've got some more glue now just going on to secure the two halves. I've put some little poppers on the outside there. I'll do the inside poppers once, which we'll fix on here, once I know the positioning, but I've got to sew it together first. So I've just been marking my stitching line. So I'm just going around putting in some stitching holes with a stitching chisel. And then I'll get this cover sewn around its edge. I'm going to do saddle stitch around here. So I've just taken a length of thread. It's a 0.8 Ritzer Tiger thread. And I'm going to go around. Uh, I've done it five times the distance here, my length of thread, because this is quite thick, obviously. I'd normally do it about four lengths. So I think I need five because it's thicker. So I'll start stitching here and I'll carry on going back. Just to give it a bit of toughness uh, where I have the joint like opening here where the ax goes in, I'm gonna go and start my stitches in the third hole, go back to the end and then go back over those stitches and back along. So I'm got up to here so far with a saddle stitch. I'll keep going around to there. So I've just done a sort of like a press over with the press studs to work out where the centers are. And I'm just going to make the holes for those. Which are there and there. So I'm going to just pop these studs in. So the idea with this is that goes into there, that goes on there, clip, clip, like that. Well, I thought I'd have a go at painting this deer in. Now, art is not my first <laughs> calling in life, but it just looks a bit plain as it is. So I sort of feel, yeah, I'm sure I can do something with that and it'd be a bit of fun. So I have got some acrylic leather paint. It's the Angelus Shoe Polish Company acrylic leather paint. And I'm going to have a go. I see quite a lot of deer on my, I often have a morning walk into Knoll Park. And so I think my chances of remembering how they look is sort of not too bad, hopefully. So I've laid some white down. I'm just going to get the first bit of those antlers done. At this stage, I'm probably thinking, oh crumbs, why have I even attempted this? But you just have to press on. I find that with quite a few things that when you try something you haven't done before, it can be really off-putting. But invariably, just keep going, keep your cool, and hope for the best, which is what I'm doing now. So I was using red oranges, bits of white, which I think that's probably not bad. One can obviously to an extent 
paint over so if I go and get it totally hashed colour wise I can paint over. I'm now going to touch in a bit of black so I know it's sort of blackish around the nose. I need a bit more blending between those colours but actually it does help accentuate it a bit. Mustn't get the ears. Right, well, <laughs> I won't play with that much more because I feel I'm reasonably happy with that for someone who hasn't done this before and is a bit of an amateur. Well, for first attempt, I'm reasonably happy with that. I'll zoom it in. There you are. Well, that's that side. <laughs> Obviously, I need to repeat something vaguely similar to the other side. I think I need to just try and tweak those antlers a tad more. But um, yeah, quite enjoyed that painting, actually. I'll probably have a go at a bit more sometime. <laughs> so that's one side. And then I'll turn it over. That's the other side. I think the sort of general principles are start with lighter colours, work onto darker colours. Having a little palette like this, you can mix them and obviously get fairly variable and infinite shades. So I found that very helpful. Using a very small little sable brush was also a good move. So this is the Tocanol, which I find to be quite a good sort of finishing compound. I believe it's a plant extract. A bit like gum track. A bit on a rag and then I'll get it on the surface going around and give it a good old rub in. And that will help to sort of like smooth it and seal it. I've just been applying some snow proof to try and keep it all waterproof, uh, protect it from the elements a bit. So got my edges done now and hopefully it will all fit all right. So I've got the axe slotted in and over it goes. This needs to bed in a little bit. There you have it. As I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, it's a sort of project, it was probably a bit more involved than I was expecting at the outset. That's the fun of trying things. But now I've got myself a nice little slightly unique axe cover now. So that's rather good fun. It's always nice trying different things and just trying, you know, I'll see that axe and I'll think, yep, that's one of mine. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you enjoyed a few of the techniques in that one. And I'll see you in the next video provided you've subscribed. <laughs> okay then, thanks very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.